Welcome to the RV Podcast, episode 398. And this week we talk about a lot of stuff, including offering you some tips on how you can save on fuel as you're driving your RV during these trying times. We're going to answer the question, how old is too old to go <laughs> RVing? And we're going to learn some RV news of the week that has China trying to take out that satellite system that all the RVers are uh, really looking forward to using for internet connectivity. All that and more coming up. Stay with us. <music> Greetings everybody. We come to you this week from Michigan's Upper Peninsula. And uh, yes, we got away for the uh, Memorial Day uh, three-day weekend and we've been doing some camping. First thing we want to say though is uh, I don't think there's as many RVers out there camping as there usually is on Memorial Day. The traffic didn't seem as heavy and we were able to get a spot in the campground we're in right now, which normally you wouldn't be able to. Look at that spot. Isn't that awesome? We are right on the shores of Lake Huron, right uh, across the Straits of Mackinac from the Lower Peninsula. And uh, we got that spot just by walking in uh, with uh, no reservations. And how many spots did they say they had open? I believe they said they had about a dozen spots open. Well, I think the second thing everybody is gonna ask us is uh, why are we dressed so warm here? Why the heavy jackets? Uh, you wanna tell them that well, one? Well, when we left home, it was very, very warm. And we stopped a couple hours, a couple hundred miles north of our home and looking at property and we had planned on spending the night there boondocking. And it was 84 degrees and the bugs were so heavy they could carry you away. Bugs, ticks, gnats, and it was really hot. The surprising thing was the ticks because uh, we have uh, camped for years on this property and never were there ticks. Never. And when we got in our rig, because of just regular insects and the heat, we started finding ticks on bow. So that was a shock. Yeah, and uh, I think you found one on you, mm -hmm. two on bow, and uh, we found one crawling around on the floor, so we have to do another inspection and all and that. And that's the reminder that uh, you're supposed to check your pet, check your pant legs and make sure that you don't have ticks. But we didn't know that this area had ticks because it never used to. Never have we seen ticks in this uh, part of Michigan. We that, camped that, there uh, when our kids were little all the time. No ticks. But as Jennifer says, it was 84 degrees. And that was maybe another 100 miles south, south of where we are right now. Right now it's 52 degrees a 31 degree difference in 100 miles. And that's of course because we're at the Straits of Mackinac where Lake Michigan and Lake Huron meet underneath the Mackinac Bridge, but it is cold. And uh, the, the good side of that is we're gonna sleep well tonight. In, we uh, should. In the area. And we have brought the Wonder, our Class B motorhome. That's why we're so glad we have two. We bought it because we were gonna do some uh, exploring boondocking in the woods and. We didn't think that the fifth wheel would handle the roads we were on, and that was a wise choice because these roads were pretty tight. We made a wise choice. <laughs> One wise choice today. And uh, we forgot Bo's leash, and we forgot his uh, rope, but, uh, and if I showed you him now, uh, he's digging a hole in the sand right uh, next he's, to Jennifer's good, foot. Good time. We tried to leave him at our campsite, and he would have no part of that, so. We had to bring them. Some people have those metal detectors to find treasure. Well, Bo's doing this the old-fashioned way. He's yeah. just digging. There's a treasure someplace down there, there. Oh, there are lots of treasures for Bo. So we talked about uh, some geopolitical stories that are making the news this week, and there are two of them that have a direct effect on our viewers. So let's start with China. China. Well, many of you have heard us talking and uh, other our viewers uh, with excitement about the availability of Starlink, the uh, Elon Musk-owned SpaceX constellation of low-orbiting satellites that brings high-speed internet just about anywhere you are. Uh, we have a system, it's phenomenal. So kind of cool. And uh, it seems like almost uh, every other week, uh, they're announcing, Starlink is announcing new services that are particularly of use to RVers. First, it was the allowing portability, meaning you could take it with you. And then just last week, they announced uh, RV for uh, Starlink for RVers. 
And that's a system that lets you essentially pay as you go. So if you're not using your uh, RV for you know three four months, you don't have to pay that monthly fee. And um, both of those have just been greeted with uh, wide praise and excitement by the RV community. But China has announced a number of scientists, military uh, scientists uh, in China have announced that they need to find a way to be able to take out Starlink. They're extremely upset about Starlink because it would, they can't control the internet. And in China where they do control uh, the free exchange of information, <laughs> The internet is a big threat, and so they want a, a, some way to be able to take that down. And um, that is, uh, you know, when they, we, they release the papers in which they're calling for this, and they're actively working on it now. And uh, I can see that that, that could be a, a real issue, a bump in the road for Starlink users someday, because China seems to be doing pretty much what it wants these yeah, days. They certainly do seem to be doing exactly what they want. So that's one story. The other story has to, to do, do with Russia. Now, what uh, we've been talking about the diesel shortages and how that, uh, and perhaps uh, rationing coming, and obviously extremely high prices for diesel, and how that affects our viewers. Well, there's another uh, part of that equation that our viewers uh, who use diesel uh, need to survive on, and that's something called DEF, uh, diesel emission fluid. Well, um, the key ingredient for DEF, guess where that comes from? Russia. And guess what's shut down because of the war with Ukraine? Our supply of DEF. <laughs> and then guess who else is the big supplier of that? China. <laughs> and guess what uh, China has done? It has stopped exporting it because um, the byproduct that they make DEF DFF, DEF with is actually uh, used in fertilizer and in China that's why they produce so much of it but because of potential food shortages and their need for more fertilizer they have stopped exports so all of this means the DEF fluid is probably going to be in short supply uh, we're getting reports that some of the big box stores are, are limiting the number of DEF uh, canisters you can buy this is, of course, important to any RVer who has a diesel motorhome, be it a, uh, a Class C, a Class B, as many of them are, and of course the Class and A diesel pushers. A diesel truck. And the real uh, fallout of this, and the most important part, is what this will mean to the trucking industry, which is already coping with high diesel prices. So, all this is to say, it's still going to be very confusing out there. It is. But, uh, we want to talk about how you can perhaps save some uh, money when you are uh, fueling up this summer. And we've got some tips and some really interesting suggestions. And when we come back, I think we'll come back from inside the RV because the sun is starting to set and it's getting a little cold. And, and, and Bo's Bo hole is, is getting a bigger. Hole. You're watching me sink. You're <laughs> undermining where I'm standing. Wait, you see this. Look at it. If those of you watching on YouTube can see it. So when we come back, We'll, uh, we'll do the next part of this uh, segment inside. from inside the RV here in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. With the drapes pulled so that Bo can't bark at anything or anybody. <laughs> Stay with us. Tired of overcrowded campgrounds and competing for reservations? Paying high fees for sites? Well, ownership is an emerging trend in RVing that might be right for you. On June 25th, there is a big lakefront sales event at the Landings in Tennessee. Jennifer and I visited the landings just west of Nashville. They offer incredible lakefront RV properties up to 70 times the size of typical RV lots with frontage on the biggest lake in Tennessee. We loved it. The scenery is breathtaking and you own it outright, not a timeshare. Your property, your way. You can have your own private dock. You can landscape, garden. They're pet friendly. It's gated and secure with high-speed internet. There's even free RV and boat storage. It's a wonderful place to make your home base. No more calling around for reservations and ready whenever you want. Dockable lakefronts start at only $59,900. Financing and big discounts are available on multi-lot packages. For information, visit rvlakefrontland.com. That's rvlakefrontland.com. When we're on a road trip, we always seem to find a way to stop at a Camping World Center. There are over 225 Camping World locations across the country, 
and there's always one close by when we need parts and accessories for our RV or just want to shop. In fact, uh, we have so much fun with uh, Camping World, and as we talk about it as one of our sponsors, they have agreed to offer a 10% discount if you use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you buy $99 or more in merchandise. You'll find everything you want from outdoor furniture and appliances, the ones you see us use in our videos and we talk about here in the podcast. RV extras that include everything from camping chairs to fire pits, electrical accessories, must-have gadgets. Check them all out. And again, don't forget, use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you visit CampingWorld.com. All right, we have come in. Just realized I have a <laughs> hot hat here. I better put on a hat. We have come in from the bugs outside and uh, the wind. Yeah, we need and that wind. That wind we're, dies we're now down. In the uh, bugs. Yeah, the bugs are out there. So... Uh, this is the section we want to talk about just some ideas about saving money when you're on the road, when you're traveling in your RV. Uh, and, and nothing is earth shaking here. We'll put links to all the things we talk about in the show notes, which you can find uh, at RVLifestyle.com. But let me start with uh, some really interesting stuff that we receive from one of our audience members who happens to work for um, a, a gasoline delivery service. And, and might I just say, you might want to take notes, whatever you're doing, stop and listen. Yeah, he, he's, it's pretty interesting stuff. And here it is. He says, I don't know what you guys are paying for gasoline. Well, I can tell you we're paying <laughs> a lot, uh, a whole lot. This is from Dean, by the way. And he says, but here in California, we're paying up a fortune per gallon. Yes, California prices are pushing uh, $8 in many mm -hmm. places. My line of work is in petroleum. And for about 31 years now, I've been doing this. And I have some tricks to help you get your money's worth from every gallon. Here at the pipeline where I work in San Jose, California, we deliver about 4 million gallons in a 24-hour period through the pipeline. One day it's diesel, the next day jet fuel, gasoline, regular and premium grades. We have 34 storage tanks here with a total capacity of 16,800,000 gallons. So he has three really interesting tips. And the first one is he says, only buy or fill up your car or truck in the early morning when the ground temperature is still cold. Remember that all service stations have their storage tanks buried below ground. The colder the ground, the more dense the gasoline. When it gets warmer, gasoline expands. So buying in the afternoon or in the evening, your gallon's not exactly a gallon. In the petroleum business, the specific gravity and the temperature of the gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel, ethanol, and other petroleum products plays an important role. A one degree rise in temperature is a big deal for this business. But the service stations don't have temperature compensation at the pumps. So he says, when you're filling up, do not squeeze the trigger of the nozzle to a fast mode. He says, if you look, you'll see that that trigger has three stages, low, medium, and high. You should be pumping on low and mode. And low, and I always pump it as fast as it'll go. I just make it automatic and, yeah. and have it go as fast as I wonder if that's low or medium. It's usually, it's usually the fastest. Oh. Uh, but if you pump on low, uh, he says it's much better because when you pump on, uh, on high, it causes some problems with vapors. Pumping on low mode minimizes the vapors that are created while you're pumping. All hoses at the pump have a vapor return. If you're pumping on the fast rate, some of the liquid that goes to your tank becomes vapor. Those vapors are being sucked up and back into the underground storage tank, so you're getting less worth for your money. It's interesting. Now, I like the next one. Okay, you want to read it? Okay. Uh, one of the most important tips is to uh, fill up when your tank is half full. The reason for this is the more gas you have in your tank, the less air occupying its empty space. Uh, gasoline evaporates faster than you can imagine. Gasoline storage tanks have an internal floating roof. This roof serves as zero clearance between the gas and the atmosphere. So to minimize the evaporation 
unlike service uh, stations, here is, is here where I work. Every truck that uh, we load is temperature compensated so that every gallon is actually the exact amount. You're paying enough for gas without yeah. losing it. And, and uh, so she says pump it when it's half full which is another smart thing for people like me who say, you know, I wonder how far I can go. It says 50 miles, so I wonder if I can really get 50. I wonder if I can get 51. Yeah, so uh, half full, and that will give you a little bit more security if it doesn't save you money, as Dean says it does. And then the last tip he has is, he says, here's just a reminder. If there is a gasoline trunk pumping into the storage tanks when you stop to buy gas, don't fill up there. Most likely, the gasoline is being stirred up as the gas is being delivered, and you might pick up some of the dirt that normally settles on the bottom. That makes sense. It uh, it does, and, and we thank Dean for sending that. And Dean, uh, I'm sure it will get some comments, and I'm sure there'll be some pros and cons, and maybe some extras as well. But we will put uh, your your uh, email in the uh, show notes for this episode that you can get at RVLifestyle.com. I think those are all excellent things that we just don't know. Yeah. So we wanted to end this uh, this segment about saving money on fuel by uh, sharing three apps that Jennifer and I like to use as we travel. Now, apps can really help you uh, find things and they can also help you now, thanks to crowdsourcing on the internet, they can help you find the most cost-effective places to fill up. So the first one is Gas Buddy. Not a lot of you know Gas Buddy. It's always a top choice when you're looking for the best price on gas. Uh, very easy to use. Navigate your search by a zip code, a city, a state. And um, because so many people are using Gas Buddy, they're reporting and updating prices regularly, which means it's, it's pretty up to date. Uh, one unique feature of Gas Buddy is its uh, price heat map gas price heat map that shows uh, gas price per gallon across the U.S. and Canada. Uh, it's a free app for iOS and Android, and uh, if you only get one, that's the one to get. But uh, more is always better when we're trying to save money. So what's another one we like? Uh, gas Guru. And this app also it has a simple interface with big buttons and large font that are easy to read. And that, I think, helps all of us. Gas prices and stations can be sorted by in various ways, too. By company, types of gas, type of payment accepted, restrooms, ATMs, service stations, and uh, more. And a favorite feature of GasGuru is the ability to get directions to a particular station. And the app is free for iOS and Androids. Now, one of the reasons we like that is often we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be looking for gas. We'll be driving down a, an interstate and we'll see a sign that says gas and you you go and it says that way and you get off, off the interstate and then you see it's that way 14 miles down that way. Uh, and that really makes me mad. Uh, but sometimes that's how we can get help, I guess. Only get people get business, there to spend their money. Business, yeah. uh, so this is a big help. And the third uh, app uh, to get and that's always worth checking to is called uh, I Exit Gas. I Exit Gas. Now, the I Exit app's fun because it shows you what's at every exit along uh, interstates. Uh, so if you're traveling the interstates, you can use the gas part of that to find stations near the exits that you're approaching, uh, including how far they are from your present location. Uh, we did that in Texas once. Uh, mm -hmm. You were driving. I said, oh, you'll find a place up ahead. And there wasn't any. And we finally were getting, we were past that 50 mile <laughs> mark. And we finally realized there's one 13 miles up and you have 24 miles to go. And uh, there was no shoulder to pull off and there was construction. Yes. I mean, oh, man. I heard about that. Yeah, one. you heard a lot about that. Yeah. Anyway, I exit gas. You can find stations by name if you're buying a particular brand uh, and what type of fuel they have availability. And it gives you a map on every exit on the interstate so it's really easy to navigate you know, when you're in unknown areas that one costs it's 99 cents and uh, it's for ios so three apps we hope that uh, those help you and again we will link to all of those on uh, the show notes for this episode at rvlifestyle.com okay we are uh, going to take a quick quick break and when we come back we're going to do a little traveling uh, across the UP, and uh, we'll have our Question of the Week segment. Where do you think we'll be in the UP? 
Stay with us. We'll be right back. When we're asked what's the most important modification we made to our RV, it's an easy answer. Battleborn batteries. Battleborn batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster, they charge fuller, they're longer lasting, they're maintenance free. And battleborn batteries are protected by a 10 year guarantee. Now, in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have. And it'll probably be the same on your rig, too. Battleborn battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. Jennifer and I swear by our Battleborn batteries. They allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium rvlifestyle.com slash lithium all right everybody welcome again we've got Bo still on his leash he doesn't know why he has to stand here as we talk to the camera but he is not going to have us here and him there it's time for the questions of the week and this time we have uh, moved locations obviously we are now uh, right across from the water that is lake superior there we've moved about a hundred miles from where we were at the straits of mackinac and uh, uh temperature pushing Pushing 80, uh, really nice, but there's a nice breeze that you can probably hear it in the microphone every now and then, and it's quiet. All right, got a couple quick questions for you. And uh, first one is, uh, is a bit of a touchy one. All right, this is from Kevin, and he says, I read with interest your recent article concerning what age might be considered too old to RV. My concern wasn't so much about how old to still enjoy the RV lifestyle, but rather what might be too old to seriously consider shopping for a newer, nicer motorhome. My mother actively takes her 25-foot Class C camping solo between April and October. She lately has begun to shop for something nicer, a 29-foot with more slide-outs and a slew of creature comforts. I'm not in favor of her plans, not at her age. Mom is 95 years old, quite spry and active. She mows her yard, cleans her house, and goes camping at regional campgrounds with her Good Slam, Good Sam Club or NASCAR tracks at every opportunity. She leaves again tomorrow. I'm both impressed and proud, but she's not rich and a new RV Class C sporting the features she desires and given today's fuel prices and considering her age seems unwise to me. Given your experience and research, am I being unreasonable? I look at her frequent frequency of use, market uncertainties, and the improvements she could lavish on her existing RV was simply the cost of sales tax on a new one and I've advised against it. She has to be the only 95-year-old seriously entertaining such thoughts. I don't think so. I think you'll find there, there are others out there. And we don't know your mom, and we don't know her health, we don't know her... Uh, how much money she has. How her income is. We don't know, uh, you know how active she is, uh, uh, how her, whether she is sharp mentally as she used to be. But you do, uh, and she does. And she clearly has this as a dream. It's a tough question. How old is too old? Well, I think she's the only judge of that. Uh, and she obviously doesn't think 95 is too old. Boy, this is such a tough question. I used to teach aqua aerobics. I, for about 29 years, I taught aqua aerobics to seniors. And I, one of my seniors was 96. And, oh, she was such a delight. So full of life. And uh, there every week after week after week. And then one day, she wasn't there anymore. She had some health issues pop up. Yes, she was 96. And the chances of having those health issues pop up at 96, you know, it's more likely. Yeah. But at 50, in your 40s, in your 30s, you never know Could what tomorrow brings between a, an accident or we just wear out or who knows what happens to us, but we break down a little bit. So such a tough question that you're asking. It sounds like you and your mom have had some conversations about this. And uh, I think that, you know, we certainly could see your concern. I mean, at 95, uh, there's not a lot of years left. Yeah, I don't know how else to say it. I mean, there really isn't. 
her quality of life seems very good right now. Yeah. And uh, if she has a year or two of joy uh, in travel, then um, then good for her. If she can afford it, she's not going to be making payments, uh, not using the, up every cent she has in the bank. The health is and the strength issue are, are big ones. Uh, so I think talking with her doctor, talking with her, and letting her make up that uh, decision. She obviously is a strong and capable woman, and, and she can do that. But you do have to be real and uh, realize th there's not a lot of years left after 95. Uh, she's had a great life, and she wants to do some more of it, and I certainly understand. So maybe your idea of fixing up what she has now might be a, a great uh, solution. I think she's looking at time. You know, it takes a long time to do uh, uh, you know to do remodeling of an RV and maybe she's got something in mind that she can buy already so we There's, can't give you much more we insight can't give you than an that answer because we we don't have all the details we don't know your finances we don't know how many children that yeah. she has if you're the only child and you're yeah. worried about her getting sick or having something happen a long ways from uh, from help and from from home so uh, uh, it's a tough one. I'm sure there'll be a lot of comments on this as our uh, our audience hears it. But uh, uh, thanks for uh, bringing us into the discussion. And tell your mother, uh, go for as long as she can, <laughs> but uh, listen to her son. How's and that <laughs> for straddling the line? I'm sure a lot of people are smiling right now and hoping that when they're 95, they're still yes. out there enjoying enjoying the life. Okay, uh, one more question, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get this. This is from uh, somebody named... Made Bob. You're going to read this one? Yeah, I'll read okay. this one. Bob uh, says, um, I have a 2018 uh, Class C RV and I need to replace the 1000 watt Magnum inverter charger. You did a video on upgrading uh, AGM batteries uh, to lithium on your, uh, your 2019 Unity where you replaced a 1000 watt Magnum inverter with a 2000 watt Victron. I'm interested in doing something similar. Uh, I was going to do it myself. I checked uh, the uh, dealer that I was going to use uh, wanted to charge me $1,452 for the inverter alone, which I think is ridiculous. Thanks. Well, Bob, um, things have changed a lot in RV technology, particularly with uh, inverters and lithium batteries. Uh, I would certainly want to upgrade it. Uh, with the 2018, you still got a lot of years left in that uh, RV of yours. But I, I would not do a 2,000 watt inverter. I would go to a 3,000 watt inverter, uh, which will then allow you to run everything. All your plugs can be inverted. Um, there's more to just putting, buying an inverter and putting the inverter in. Uh, you also have to replace all the wires. The wiring for a 1,000 watt inverter is, uh, is much less than a 2,000 watt needs, or particularly a 3,000. But I think a 3,000 watt is pretty much, uh, should be the standard. Yes, you can get by with the 2,000, it'll do fine. But um, try for a 3,000 and uh, you're gonna have to get some more, uh, some heavier cabling. It's a lot more complicated than just buying an inverter and switching it out. Hope that helped. Uh, hey, we love getting your questions. You can uh, send them to us right here on the screen is our address. And uh, we're gonna go enjoy the UP of Michigan, uh, all the, the uh, Memorial Day vacationers have kind of gone home. The campground we're in is pretty quiet now, and, and we're like right on the lake. So what are we doing uh, making video? Let's go out and enjoy <laughs> it ourselves. Everybody have a great time. We'll see you back here next week. Happy trails.